What's happening, folks? Welcome back to the channel. It's starting 11 prediction time for the big derby at Ibrox tomorrow. It's a monumental game in the context of the season. Uh, these games are massive. We've won two out of two so far, but we find ourselves in a position where we can't afford to lose tomorrow. We've got to have big performances all over the pitch um, and hopefully Brendan Rodgers having a full strength squad to pick from um, is going to put us in the best position to get a positive result uh, that we need. If you missed the preview show last night or you haven't watched it yet, I'm going to link it up here. And at the end of the video, I was joined by Martin and Chris to go through the game, the magnitude of it, um, the possible team selections for Brendan Rodgers now that we're at full strength or close to it. Um, and all the possible fallout for the game and the build-up and, and how the guys feel going into it. Um, apologies for a couple of audio problems throughout that video. Um, I did pick up in some comments last night. Martin was travelling. Um, he was actually on his way down south, so he, he actually filmed, recorded uh, in a service station. So challenging um, when you're recording a video like that in public. But um, anyway, back to the game tomorrow. Um, both teams in relatively similar form in the last uh, three or four weeks. We've obviously followed the last derby where, again, we went in like the first one at Ibrox. We went in as underdogs. I don't think there's any challenge in that. Um, you go back to that first game at Ibrox. We'd drawn 0 nil against St. Johnson. We'd been put out of the League Cup by Kilmarnock um, and there was a very uneasy feel around us. Um, and then, obviously, you fast forward to the turn of the year um, and again, in December, we had back-to-back -back defeats against Hearts and Kilmarnock and nobody felt confident going into that game. Um, we've come out with maximum points from both of those uh, derbies so far. That bodes well going into tomorrow, but again, there's just been this undercurrent this season where some performances have been way below par, but in the bigger games, in the European games, um, and in those two derbies, we have stepped up and we've looked better at times than we have against the, the teams who come with a low block and, and defend deep against us. Um, so hopefully tomorrow we get a performance more like uh, those those previous performances this season in the big games because that's what we're going to need. It's obviously going to be um, a difficult place to go. There's no Celtic supporters in the stadium again. Um, that's the last time that will happen at Ibrox before next season we go back to 2,500 allocation. But um, you would expect Rangers as a home team to come out aggressively, uh, try and start the game fast. We need to weather that. We need to get a foothold in the game. Thinking back to that last game at Ibrox, we touched on this last night. Callum McGregor um, really dictated that first 25, 30 minutes. And I think Rangers get their tactical set up wrong. So it's going to be intriguing to see how they approach it uh, tomorrow as the home team under a different manager this time around. Um, Callum McGregor been out, obviously. Um, so the manager's got a decision to make there. And we'll come to that in a minute when we talk about the the starting 11, but um, I think all over the pitch we need big performances. Um, this team have done it before at Ibrox, they've done it this season before at Ibrox, so they shouldn't be short of belief and they certainly shouldn't be short of motivation because we find ourselves in this position where, as I say, uh, we cannot afford to lose and I think there's enough um, sentiment around that Rangers are the favourites, that Rangers are going to go on and win this title, that the players have got something to prove tomorrow. Um, so certainly motivation should never be lacking in this fixture but tomorrow particularly um, the players have got to stand up and, and put in big performances to get the result we need from the game so let's get into that starting 11 then um, a lot of people think that this team picks itself as they say um, it's one of the first occasions this season where Brendan Rodgers had a full squad to pick from um, injuries throughout the season have really hampered us but not the case this weekend, and that's a huge boost for us. We'll start in goals. Obviously, with Joe Hart, um, his last away derby in a Celtic jersey, the back four, I expect to be Johnston, Carter Vickers, Scales and Greg Taylor. Um, Carter Vickers obviously hasn't played a minute against Rangers this season, so it's quite remarkable to think we've got six points out of six against them, um, considering how important Carter Vickers is to the team and how we defend and how defensively uh, nervous we've looked without him to think that we've navigated those first two derbies without him and, and came out with maximum points um, bodes well again for tomorrow because you think that he's got to give us that extra solidity that we haven't had in the first two derbies as I said last night watching back that the December game at Celtic Park there's a couple of long balls over the top where our back four is just all at sea we don't know whether to drop we don't know whether to step up um, and they got a couple of chances for balls like that I think when Carter Vickers is in the team 
were much more strong in terms of defending um, balls over the top. He's quick, he's strong, his recovery pace is really good um, and I think he brings a calmness to the whole back four and an organisation which is going to be vital for us tomorrow. So moving into midfield, I just mentioned Callum McGregor. I think if he's available and fit, he trained yesterday. Brendan Rodgers said he was going to make a final decision today. Um, how much of that is sort of cat and mouse in terms of the build-up and keeping the opponents guessing, I don't know. But I think if Callum McGregor's fit in any way, he has to start. He's been absolutely massive in both of these games this season. The, obviously, I talked about the, the, the first game at Ibrox, but the game in December, he absolutely dragged us through that. His performance was brilliant. Um, we know he relishes these fixtures. There's just going to be that question mark over his sharpness because he hasn't played for five weeks. Um, but I think if he's fit, you've got to play him. O'Reilly in front. And the return of Rio Hattati, who's another key player for us who hasn't played a minute against Rangers this season. Um, I think last weekend, having him back in the team, you can see his qualities, you can see how he helps us. He receives the ball really well, he links the game from middle to front brilliantly, and he's willing to take risks in terms of his forward passing. If you look at his numbers, they're not the, the not the most accurate long passer, but it's because he constantly takes risks. And I think at times this season, we've played far too safe through midfield. Um, Hatati doesn't do that. We need a big performance from him tomorrow. Again, where he's at in his sharpness, because last week was only his first game back, we might still only get 60, 65 minutes out of him. Um, but I think he's absolutely got to start the game and he gives us a different dimension to what we've had in these two fixtures against Rangers so far this season. Um, the player in focus this week is Matt O'Reilly, who started the season brilliantly. If you look at his stats, he's by far and away the most creative, best-performing midfielder in the league this season. Um, his goals have obviously been fantastic. He's a lot of assists as well. Um, but there is the perception that that's tailed off since the winter break. And in those first 10 games after the winter break, he only produced three assists and one goal. But last week at Livingston, he did get a goal and an assist. So hopefully that's a sign that his form is starting to come back. And we've seen him hurt Rangers in these fixtures before. Um, but he's another one that we need a big performance out of. I think the midfield is always always a key battleground in this fixture. Um, and I think we've got better footballers in there. But the question is always about physicality, um, running power. There is going to be spells in the game where it might descend into a bit of a battle in there, um, a war of attrition, and we need to we need to fight and we need to be strong and we need big performances from all three of those guys in there. Um, in terms of the front three, it's got to be unchanged. Nicholas Kuhn on the right-hand side, uh, Dyson made on the left and Kyogo through the middle. Um, it's a massive, massive day for Nicholas Kuhn. Um, those first two or three performances were very, very strange. And it's interesting now that you see him picking up. It's, it's such a contrast, these last two or three performances to his first two or three. Um, I think the problems with his fitness and sharpness and strength in the first couple of games is said to be the reason that he was performing so poorly, but that makes you think, why was he in the team? It's maybe a sign of where we were and the lack of options we had that he had to be thrown in, even though he wasn't at the required levels of fitness and strength. But you can see that power in his game now. He's been a lot more direct, he's been creative, he's getting by players. Um, he's he's added a couple of goals and an assist um, in recent weeks as well. So he's looking good, but this is a big test uh, for any Celtic player. Uh, he's got to stand up and be counted tomorrow when he gets in wide positions. Um, if it's going to be Barisic or Yilmaz, or maybe even Sterling at left back for Rangers, he's got to cause them problems. He's got to be brave. He's got to, to commit them. He's got to dribble at them, get by them, try and make things happen. He can't take the safe option. Um, there might be opp uh, there might be opportunities for us in transition as well, being the away team tomorrow. Um, and again, when you get the ball into good positions in wide areas, you need to punish, you need to be ruthless, um, and that will take a big performance for Nicholas Kuhn. But I think his form coming into this game is promising, and he's heading in the right direction, at least. Dyson Maida on the left-hand side, who knows what we're going to get. Um, lots of running. Obviously, his defensive work in these games has been massive for us in terms of um, matching James Tavernier, trying to stop him coming the other way. Um, but his attacking output, his creative output, um, is so indifferent, it's so disappointing, it lets you down at key moments. And again, like I've just said for Kuhn on the other side, if he gets in dangerous areas and behind the Rangers defence um, and crossing positions, he's got to try and, and produce some form of quality to try and find Kyogo in the middle or Kuhn coming in at the back post or a late arrival from midfield like Matt O'Reilly. Um, the only question mark uh, with Maeda is that output. 
and when he gets in those positions, he's got to be ruthless as well tomorrow if he can. Um, Kyogo Furuhashi through the middle. Um, he's been an absolute monster in this fixture in the last six or seven games. A brilliant goal-scoring record. Um, got the winner the last time out at Ibrox. Got the winner in the game in December with an absolutely unbelievable strike on his weak foot from the edge of the box. Um, he's a big game player, and if we can get the supply to him tomorrow, you would back him to be the match winner again for us. Um, so there you go. That's the 11 I think Brendan Rodgers will go with. If you disagree, let me know in the comments below. Um, we will be back tomorrow um, with the post-match pint after the game. And let's hope we're celebrating another massive Celtic victory wherever you're watching it tomorrow. Enjoy it. We'll see you then. Cheers.